it's me, Lauren, again. Hi! So, um, I still have a cold, um, so if you can hear that in my voice, I'm sorry. Um, I do try my best to make it sound like I don't have a cold. Um, <laughs> something I guess you have to learn um, when you are teaching English and <laughs> the whole job is like your pronunciation of things. Um, but yeah, I do really, I really have a cold. I woke up like really congested. But yeah, <laughs> it's not a bad cold, it just, my voice does sound a little weird. Maybe it's just me, maybe I just think <laughs> that it sounds weird, but it does. Um, so this is a question corner video, yay! Uh, so this is question corner number 26. Um, it's from RSS313, and they asked me, I hear horror stories about certain schools and have heard good and bad about Interact. So, how do they treat you as a person? Do they pay well? Is there downtime between classes to smoke or prepare or whatever? How long is it? <laughs> how long is lunch? And is it paid for daily? So, <laughs> basically, um, I'm here to answer these questions. And I don't normally and like like answering these questions in a video. Um, but I get so many related questions in the comments that I'm just going to make a video and maybe, you know, it'll help <laughs> answer a lot of people's questions. Um, so, number one, how does Interact treat me as a person? Um, I think they treat me well. Um, I've had some friends who have had more negative experiences and I've had some friends who have, you know, had really great experiences. Um, basically, it's hard to answer this question because um, there are many different branches of Interact. So I work for the Osaka branch, which says like the whole Kansai area. Um, there are branches all over Honshu, and um, yeah. So I mean, but like each branch has like different people like running it, and so I don't know. I mean, I think the people in the Osaka branch are really cool, but I can't speak to what your experience would be like in the Shizuoka branch or the Tokyo branch or wherever. So, I don't know, <laughs> but as far as my experience goes, it's been pretty good. Um, a lot of what your experience here in, at Interact would be like um, is like determined by the school that you're placed in. Um, like Interact, you really don't have a whole lot of communication with them. Um, uh, the, mo the main communication you have is by email, like occasionally they'll email you with like a notice or they want more infor information about something, or they email you your class schedule, or whatever. That's your main communication with Interact. Um, otherwise, it's basically just you're working at the school that they've told you to go to. Um, so if your relationship with the people at that school is not so good, then yes, like you would view Interact in a very negative way. But if you had a really great experience at a school, um, you would view Interact in a very positive light. Um, so, yeah, it's hard to answer these types of questions, but I think that they have treated me very well. They're, they've always been very respectful and very responsive to my emails. Um, whenever I have questions, they're always very responsive. Um, always, always responding within like a couple of days. Um, and if they don't, they're like very, very apologetic and they, you know, they really do try to be on top of it. Um, and like... They've always paid on time, everything like that. And um, even after Hurricane Sandy, like, they knew that, they remembered that I was from New Jersey and they emailed me to ask if my family was okay. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, that's so nice. Um, I don't know, that, that really made me feel really great just to know that they were thinking of me, that I'm not, like, just, like, a number. <laughs> um, and they do try to treat you well because you are their commodity. You are what they are selling to these boards of education, that our teachers are great and blah, blah, blah. So they want you to be happy. They want you to um, live here successfully. So if you have... They're... I don't know. I think that they're great, but, you know, they're not, like, the best company in the world, and they're not the worst company in the world. They're just a company. <laughs> Um, and a lot of people, I think, think way too hard about, like, coming here and, like, you know, what company should I go with? Is this a good company? Is this a bad company? Um, but, like, people who are not in Japan. Um, and I probably did the same thing before I came over here, but honestly, what you need is a visa to come over here. So if a, if a company is going to hire you and sponsor you for a visa and get you a visa, 
you can come here and work there, and if you don't like it, you can find another job while you're living here. Um, as long as you have that visa, that first visa is the most difficult one to get, but after that, you can continue working and keep your visa and keep renewing it and everything like that, and it's all good, but it's that first visa that's difficult to get. Um, so, yeah, so keep that in mind. <laughs> so they're going to give you a visa, maybe they're not such a bad company. Um, do they pay well? So, um, I think that they pay pretty well. Um, and in terms of like U.S. dollars, um, it's, I get maybe about like 27000 a year, which is perfectly, perfectly fine for a single girl living by herself in Japan. Um, but I mean, that's, you know, with the current U.S. economy, um, probably a few years ago it would have been probably like 25000 a year. <laughs> But, you know, woo, the yen is really strong. Um, but um, how much you get paid is determined by your contract and what um, VUE you're working for and, you know, the, maybe even the branch you're working for. So that's not even like a statistic that I could say that this is exactly what you're going to get. Don't expect to get that. Um, you could get more. Um, you could get less. I don't know. Um, I was paid more on my first contract than I am now. Um, so, yeah, you, you never know. Um, so just don't, you know, don't plan on getting that much money. Um, is there downtime between classes to prepare, to smoke, whatever? So I would advise, if you are a smoker, I'm not a smoker. Um, I have friends who are smokers. Pretty much all of my friends are smokers. <laughs> it's really weird. I don't like smoking, I'm kind of against smoking, but all my friends are smokers. Um, and I love them still, but um, basically, and a lot of people in Asia smoke as well, but um, there's a problem recently with like uh, children smoking, so like, uh, like middle school age and high school age. So if you are a smoker, I wouldn't smoke while you're at school, um, because like it would look bad on you, um, like, it would look like, you know, you, like, because you're basically, you're a sensei, you're a role model for the students, and if they see you smoking, um, you know, maybe they'll think that smoking is okay, um, and, I mean, in the U.S., like, teachers are also role models, but that's, like, taking to a different, it's taking to a different level here <laughs> in Japan, like, you are really a role model, um, so there are probably, um, other teachers at the school who do smoke, and ask them, ask the principal, that's probably the best idea, ask the school principal, is it alright if I smoke here on campus or do I have to smoke somewhere else? Um, where, is, where is it okay for me to smoke? Um, things like that. Because, like, don't just go out and smoke on your break time um, because it could look really bad. It could look really, really bad. Um, I know in my first contract it was a pretty big issue. Um, teachers smoking, like not just interact teachers, just teachers, Japanese teachers smoking because some of the students were smoking and you know they're like, you know, 12 or 13 years old <laughs> and it just, it just looks bad. Anyway, um, so yeah, um, but basically there are like 10 minutes between classes or sometimes 5 minutes between classes. Um, so if you do smoke and you, knew, you know where it's appropriate to smoke, if you can smoke in that 10 minute time frame, there's probably time for you to go out and smoke pretty quickly. Um, and you probably won't be teaching class every period. Some, some days are like that <laughs> and they're really awful. Um, but you, there's usually like at least one period during the day where you're not teaching, so um, perhaps during that time you can. Um, as far as preparing goes, um, you're supposed to do that either before school actually starts. So you're supposed to get there early anyway, like uh, like 45 minutes at least before school starts. So um, during that time, so that's usually when I like organize my life and um, <laughs> you know make photocopies that I need to make photocopies for for like the classes and stuff and whatever um, and I don't know, just review the lessons for the day. Um, and, you know, pre preparation is supposed to be after you're done with classes for the day. So for me, that's at home. <laughs> uh, every night, I'm like preparing for the next class. 
Um, or if you like from a, my first contract where I was at one school and I was able to prepare everything. I was able to prepare everything after um, I finished work for the day, like I finished classes for the day, but while I was at school. So my nights were my own and free. Um, not so right now. Um, but yeah, there definitely is time to prepare. Um, and there's not really time to prepare in between classes. Um, you know, you only have like 10 minutes. I mean, there are there are times when I have like, let's say, three classes in, the, in a row and they're all different lessons <laughs> and sometimes they're lessons I haven't ever taught before. Um, so it's definitely, you know, challenging sometimes, but it's doable. And after you do it, you're like, wow, I succeeded. Like, wow, I feel so proud of myself. Um, it's definitely, definitely possible. Um, but yeah, there is time to, time to, there is time to prepare. Um, yeah. And how long is lunch and is it paid for daily? Um, you are entitled to, um, a 45 minute break for lunch. Um, you are not really supposed to leave the school during that time. Um, so you couldn't, like, go out to the company and get lunch or whatever. I mean, there there have been times when I did that. They were all with my um, first contract. Like, the way my contract now works, um, everything goes through me. It's like, if I had a question about the school or something, I would have to call Interac, and Interac would have called the school for me, and then they would call me back with the answer. <laughs> So it's a little weird, if I, like, especially if I'm like at the school and like we can't just communicate directly, but that's the way that the contract works. Um, my first contract, it was, I, I had direct, I was able to directly communicate with the school. So if I forgot my lunch or I, which happened a couple times, <laughs> forgot my lunch, or if I really needed to go to the post office, I would ask the principal, is it alright if I go home quickly go to the convenience store that's like right next door to the school, is that okay? <laughs> And if he says okay, then I could run there and get food and come back. Um, but otherwise, you can't just leave. Um, yeah, it looks bad. I mean, you probably technically could because you're not really like an official like member of the school, but it just looks bad on you. Um, so just ask for permission. Um, or, you know, even if you're not sure whether you should be asking Interac or the school, ask Interac. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, and you're paid, basically you're paid, each day that you work, you're paid. Like, you, you get, like, um, let's say I, you know, I work every day. I, I work every day anyway, but if I work, you know, five days a week, I'll get paid for each, one, each of those five days. Um, so, um, if I could have, like, one class one day, you know, five classes the next day, three classes the next day after that, and I would still be paid the same amount for each day. Um, I'm not paid for the number of classes I do or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so basically you are sort of paid, <laughs> you're sort of paid for lunch, but not directly, I guess. You're just paid for the day. So, um, I hope that you found uh, my response helpful, and, uh, do try to take this, like, with a grain of salt. I mean, these are based on my experiences, not your experiences and um, yours will be different and um, everyone's are going to be different um, so yeah take that with a grain of salt and also remember any like reviews that you hear online um, most, of, most of the time they're going to be negative because people if you're like you are you know feel slighted or whatever you want to vent and complain and the internet is a great forum to do that so um, do t keep that in mind as well um, you don't know, like, the circumstances with the company or the person or whatever, like, whatever went down. So do take that with a grain of salt. Um, but sometimes, you know, if there are a lot of negative complaints, maybe it's something to look into. But, um, yeah, do try to keep that in mind. So, um, thanks for watching. And, uh, if you have any questions for the Question Corner, please put them in the comments below. And I will try my best to answer your question, um, either in the comments or maybe I'll make a video. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for watching guys. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.